I'm Callie Adkins. I am the East Region Conservation Wildlife Biologist. We are out in Mosier, Oregon today, and we're out sampling northwestern pond turtles in the pond complex here in Mosier. Uh, this is a long-standing project for the district, the Mid-Columbia District. They started doing this in early 2000s, um, and this started out as a mark recapture project. So that means you capture turtles, you make a unique identifying mark on them, and then you come back and you sample again. You let them go, of course, and then you come back and you sample again, um, and then you can estimate the population size from that. Um, and we, you know, have been evolving this project uh, over the years, and now we pit tag the turtles, and that's the unique identifying mark. So that's kind of like the microchip that some people put in their dogs so that if they get lost, they can be scanned. This is a really unique project because probably 90% of the ponds that we sample are on private land. So it is a huge cooperation with private landowners to allow us on and uh, sample on their, on their land year after year. And we're extremely thankful. Um, and not only do they let us, but they're really enthusiastic. One of them has a turtle crossing sign up and uh, you know, check in with us every single year to know how their turtles are doing. 60 is the height. My name is Tessa Ott. I am the conservation strategies intern. Yesterday, we set the traps with bait. Uh, we use chicken or sardines. And then the next day we come out, we make sure that it's less than 24 hours that we check the traps. And we come out, we see if there are any turtles in there. If there are, we take measurements of the turtles um, for long-term growth monitoring, overall health, just to make sure that all the turtles are doing well. And for the mark and recapture study. Then we release the turtles uh, as well. And we do that for all the ponds in this complex in Mosier. If we do find a fully grown female who is completely done growing and is sexually mature, we'll take that turtle and we will put on a BHF transmitter. That transmitter allows us to track the turtle with radio telemetry. I go to each pond about twice a week and track the turtles to see what parts of the habitat that they're using. And this data will be used to make restoration project decisions or just general information about our unique population here in Mosher. Through this project, we've been able to uh, derive um, metrics about the population. So we know that there's a good span of age classes. So just today we caught a little three-year-old turtle, which is, you know, very tiny, less than, the palm, less than the size of the palm of my hand. And then we catch turtles that are too old for us to class. And we know from some of the studies, long-standing studies that have gone on on the west side of the state that they can be, um, you know, upwards of 50 years old. So it's really interesting that our ponds out in Mosier have, you know, that wide, healthy span of age classes, and that, that's what we like to see. We're also looking into uh, movement patterns. So we started, last year, we started um, putting transmitters on them so that we can track their movement patterns throughout the ponds uh, from area to area, because this is a really unique population of turtles um, in Oregon because it's on the east side of the state so it's a lot drier on this side of the mountains than it is on the west side where we see most of our turtle populations. Um, so we don't we're not quite sure if their life cycle patterns follow what we see on the west side of the state so we really want to understand um, their timing of nesting and then overwintering and then even out here since these ponds are ephemeral meaning that they dry up uh, sometimes they'll estivate which means that they bury them into the mud so that they can survive those really dry times of year, which is something that would be more unique to this dry side of the state than the wet side of the state. So yeah, we've got an awesome intern this year and she is doing a lot of the tracking so that we can understand better the upland habitats that they use. We've got a really good handle on how they're using uh, these aquatic habitats, but really trying to find more information out about the upland so that we can, you know, work to make sure that we're protecting some of those important movement corridors. This is a site that's on federal land, 
So this is an awesome opportunity that if we can do some sort of habitat improvement to create better upland or nesting habitat, we, we'd have the opportunity to do that from this, this data we're collecting. Got a transmitter on this one. The predators for west, the Northwestern pond turtle vary through their life stages as when they are first hatched and they're hatchlings, they're about that big and they can be eaten by pretty much anything. Uh, birds are a big predator, coyotes, any canine pets are a big predator for the hatchlings. Fish, uh, especially invasive catfish. Uh, bullfrogs are a big predator for the hatchlings. And then as they get older, birds and canines are really the biggest predators of the Northwestern pond turtle. Luckily, they do have that protective shell and they're pretty resilient. Once they get to a certain size, their predator list gets a little bit smaller. Okay. All right, so Annuli 2 Warren, you are good to go, buddy. Okay. I'm gonna grab some chicken.